We built this party barge a few years ago and it's a ton of fun, but one of the challenges is that somebody always needs to be in the back driving or steering the thing around the lake while everybody else is partying. And so that's kind of like the, the worst job on the, on the boat. So this year I spent some time figuring out how to add autopilot to it. So you can see this is the Raymarine ST2000 Plus Autopilot, which they only advertise it to work for sailboats, but the thought was to add it to an outboard motor, which I saw a couple folks online also did. So I just built this bracket that bolts to the bottom of our tiller handle on our 20 horse Tohatsu. And there's just this linear actuator that drops onto a pin, which is threaded onto the bracket. But the added thing is that we added a remote to it so you could steer it from anywhere in the, on the barge. So you could be up front uh, sitting in a chair or, or whatever and, and uh, steering it from the front. So you can see once the motor started, you put it in gear and then you can just use the friction lock on the throttle to put the throttle to whatever speed setting you want. And then from anywhere on the barge, you could steer it with this remote. So something that I didn't totally understand about this autopilot before I got it and started playing with it is that there's two modes. You could be in what they call standby mode or auto mode. In standby mode, which I'm showing here in the video, you can just simply steer the thing left and right. Uh, and then when you go to auto mode, it actually holds a, whatever compass setting you're at. Um, so it'll keep uh, compensating for the compass setting. And then when you go left or right or, or 10, 10 degrees plus or minus, um, then it'll it'll adjust your compass heading to that 10 degrees plus or minus, which I guess is how a typical autopilot works, but I didn't really understand that when I bought this thing because I don't have any experience with them. So yeah, uh, all you do is just nudge it left or right, 10 degrees left or right, and it'll maintain that compass heading by um, continuously you know, adjusting the steering position. So you can see it works fantastically. I was really kind of blown away about how easy this was to put together. Um, the hardest part was probably adding the remote. For adding the remote, I actually found a video on YouTube, uh, which I'll post a link in the description, um, by a guy named George Dobransky, and he posted, he even posted like a guide on how to wire the thing in. It's all um, uh, really well documented, and he has a video showing a, it, uh, his version of it working. And so I basically just followed that guide for the most part. Um, uh, I'm sure this voids the warranty, obviously, because we're taking the thing apart and wiring it in. But I think this beats the heck out of buying the remote from Raymarine, because from what I can tell, buying their version of it is like five or $600. Um, of course, that might be worth it to some people because you don't have to worry about doing all these modifications. And uh, and also, the their remote has some added features. But I saw mixed reviews on it, and I didn't really need those added features. and. It, I don't know, it just felt a little crazy to spend that much money, so that's why I'm doing it this way. So you can see in this clip that I'm trying to show that each pair of buttons, left to right, only use only require three wires to go back to the controller rather than four because they share a common pin. And that really matters because by the time you run all these wires from the buttons all the way back to the control on the bottom end, it's quite a lot of wires. Um, so, so every little bit counts. So I wound up with eight wires that I needed to run back to the controller. And the biggest challenge here is to get it past this motor section. So you see that I had to notch it out. I used a die grinder to notch out the plastic and then hot glue it in place. And then I can run the wires all the way back to the controller, which has plenty of room back here. One important thing I learned here is to stretch this antenna wire out as far as you can. That seemed to significantly improve the range. Prior to that, I probably only got like 20 feet of range. And now it, uh, it was easily 50 feet of range from the remote, which is quite amazing. So in the guide that George published, you could see that he set his up so buttons A and B on his remote are doing plus or minus 10 degrees, and then buttons C and D are doing the auto and standby functions on the autopilot. And I didn't want to do that. I preferred to have uh, plus or minus 1 degree and then plus or minus 10 degrees. And then if you want to set auto or standby, then you just run back to the back of the boat and, and press one of those buttons. That works a lot better for me because the plus or minus 10 degrees is actually quite a lot of uh, turn and so sometimes you kind of want to just like fine tune it and bump it a couple degrees left or right and that seems to work really well for me but I can also understand depending on your circumstances it might be better for someone out there to do auto and standby remotely as well because 
if you go into if you're in standby then you can just manually steer the thing and so the the degree increments don't really matter at that point if you just uh, do plus or minus either one or ten degrees then you're just simply steering the boat left or right um, without any sort of autopilot control to it and then when you go into auto then it'll hold the heading that you're that you're at so that it would be kind of nice to be able to control from the remote it, it's not that big of a deal for, to me though i'd rather have the plus or minus one degree so there you have it a really easy inexpensive way to add autopilot functionality to an outboard motor i i love this thing this was really a successful project and it added a ton of functionality to our boat thanks for watching